Hi there, and welcome back to Nutrition Bites for week five. My name is Kelsey, and I am the registered dietitian here at Lifestyle Medical, if you are just joining us. So let's go ahead and get started. So today we are going to focus on more of a nutrition education topic instead of a specific recipe like some of our previous weeks. So today we're going to be talking about building a balanced plate when it comes to our meal times. So we'll first talk about what does this look like, then we'll talk about carbs, protein, and fats. We'll talk a little bit about the food pyramid and the my plate method. Uh, then I'll show you one of my favorite visuals called the plant-based plate. And then we'll talk about how to apply it to other meals like breakfast and snacks. And then we'll talk about the weekly challenge. All right. So what does a balanced diet look like? Well, there are many suggestions out there and really the take home is that it's going to look different for everybody. But the main idea is that you should be getting um, most of your nutrients from a variety of fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. Now, when it comes to our macronutrients, we have protein, carbohydrates, and fat. And there are suggested ranges as to how much a percentage of the calories each one should contribute to the total daily caloric intake. So for example, carbohydrates should take up the majority of our calories for the day with about 45 to 65% of our calories. Uh, protein should take about 10 to 30% of your calories and fat should take about 20 to 35%. So this picture here just highlights how different it can look and still stay within the ranges. So this individual on this side is eating a lower carb diet at 45% of their calories coming from carbs. Now this is still within the recommended range, um, but this individual over here is eating 65% of their calories from carbohydrates. Again, still within that acceptable macronutrient distribution range. It just goes to show that uh, diet needs to be individualized. And this is another great reason to work with a registered dietitian or a healthcare provider that is focused on diet to kind of help you come up with an individualized plan that works for you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about each of the macronutrients. So first we have carbohydrates. Uh, and carbohydrates are very important because they supply our body with glucose. This is our body's preferred source of fuel. And then they also provide fiber, which has a ton of health benefits from managing our blood sugars, helping to lower cholesterol, and keep our bowels healthy. So some great sources of carbohydrates include fruits, starchy vegetables like potatoes, legumes, and then whole grains. Next, we have protein, and protein is very important to support growth and repair of the tissues in our body. So some great sources of plant protein include beans and lentils, soy and tofu products like tempeh, and then many vegetables like broccoli are really high in protein, but all plant foods are going to contain at least a little bit of protein. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, and the third macronutrient is fat. We need to eat fat in our diet, not too much, but we need to have some, uh, and it helps to keep us full and satiated as well as just playing an integral role in the cells of our body and absorbing nutrients. So some plant sources of fat include avocados, nuts and seeds, uh, olives, and then in sometimes uh, small amounts of like extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil can be part of a healthy diet. Okay, so you may remember seeing pictures like this throughout the years. Uh, there's been different visual aids that have come and gone to help us kind of figure out what a balanced diet looks like. So first we had the food pyramid um, with our, you know, our grains and our pastas, breads, fruits and vegetables, meats and dairy, and then fats and sugars here at the top. And then that changed into this my plate method where it you know, showed us on a plate how to kind of divide up the different food groups. So these are some different visual aids that you know have come and gone that you may have seen. So I want to introduce you to another visual aid that's my favorite. And this is the plant-based healthy plate and it's by Kaiser Permanente. And the idea here uh, is to fill half the plate with non-starchy vegetables, a quarter of the plate with a plant-based protein, 
and then the other quarter with a grain or starchy vegetable. And then each day, just here it talks about including three servings of fruit, um, some plant-based milk, such as almond or soy, and then a small amount of healthy fats like nuts or olive oil, things like that. So this is another great visualization of how to build a balanced, you know, meal when we're sitting down at the dinner table. So basically the take home here is to include most or every food group at each meal or snack to make a balanced plate. The benefit in doing this is that it can help keep you full until your next meal. It ensures variety in your diet. Uh, it can help to balance our blood sugars and it makes sure that we are provided with adequate nutrients. If we're just eating the same thing over and over and over again, we're, it's possible that we're gonna be missing out on certain nutrients. So we wanna have that variety. Okay, so this seems to make a lot of sense when it comes to dinner, right? Dinner is when we eat our vegetables, but how do we do this when it comes to other meals like breakfast or snacks? Um, our previous Nutrition Bite session, we talked about plant power bowls, and those are great you know, all-in-one meals that have all three macronutrients, and I'll link that uh, article in this video and article as well. Um, but what do we do when it's breakfast? You know, it's often hard to add vegetables to breakfast. So here is the take home for this. Um, we want to not just focus on one food group for the meal, like simply having just oats. Um, we want to add side dishes to incorporate all the food groups. And as much as possible, we want to include carbohydrates, healthy fats, protein at every meal. So breakfast, here's some ideas to have a more balanced breakfast. Try a smoothie with all the food groups. So if you're used to having just a fruit smoothie, this could be adding in frozen spinach or half an avocado. Uh, you could enjoy a tofu scramble with vegetables like spinach, tomatoes, peppers. Uh, you, consider, you could consider having a side of beans with your breakfast. You could add a handful of nuts. You could sprinkle seeds or berries on your oatmeal. And you could swap out regular toast for a slice of sweet potato toast. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about snacks. When it comes to having a balanced snack, I want you to think of the phrase produce plus protein. And basically this means having a fruit or a vegetable plus some protein. So some snack ideas include carrots and hummus. You could have that leftover scrambled tofu with veggies, celery and peanut butter, grapes and almonds, or roasted chickpeas and blueberries. Just some ideas for you guys. All right, here is the weekly challenge. I would love for you to include vegetables for breakfast three times this week. Alternatively, you could swap out three of your snacks, you know, whatever that may be, chips or things like that, uh, swap that out for a handful of nuts this week, three different times. Uh, so thank you. I hope that you found some useful information this week and I look forward to talking to you all next week.